Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and today I've got just a real quick uh, tutorial for you, not part of my normal series that I've been doing. But I've gotten some email from people that have had some difficulty with the Adafruit Ultimate GPS and let me say first of all, I really like the Adafruit Ultimate GPS. Uh, those of you uh, who follow my channel know that I do a lot of high altitude ballooning. And the nice thing about the, uh, the Adafruit unit is, is that it will actually work at very high altitudes. Uh, most of the GPS manufacturers do not properly interpret the government regulations. And the government regulations say that if something is very high and it's going very fast, it might be an intercontinental ballistic missile and therefore you have to shut off the GPS. Uh, the thing is, is that it needs to be, it, in order to shut the GPS off, it needs to be both of those things at the same time, that if something is going really, really fast and, and it's going uh, really, really high, that's when it might be an intercontinental ballistic missile. But unfortunately, most of the GPS manufacturers interpret it as an or. They say, well, if it's really high, it might be an intercontinental ballistic mi uh, missile, or if it's going really fast, it might be an intercontinental ballistic missile. So if you try to use most GPSs for uh, high altitude ballooning, you get about, about 50,000, 60,000 feet high, and they shut off. Okay, the nice thing about the Adafruit unit is I've been able to take it up to, I think the highest reading we have gotten is 119,000 feet. And uh, it didn't shut off at that point. It's just at that point we lost telemetry. We lost communication with the high altitude uh, uh, probe. And therefore, that was the last tip that we got. <clears throat> So I really like the uh, Adafruit GPS for that reason. It also I like it because it has a regulator on it. You can just power it with five volts off of something like the uh, the Arduino or the BeagleBone Black, as we've got it set up over here right now. So there's a lot to really like about it. There are a few issues that make it not quite as ultimate as we would <laughs> ultimately like it to be. One is as much as I love it it is sometimes hard to get a fix. Now I've gotten an email from you guys asking for help that you're not getting a fix. And so I think maybe what it is is, is that this onboard <coughs> antenna, the onboard antenna is maybe not the best antenna and therefore you don't just go outside and boom immediately get a fix. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to get a fix. So if you are struggling with the Adafruit Ultimate GPS getting a fix, I'd like to give you a few pointers because I will say that I've used these things in dozens and dozens and dozens of projects and I think I've learned a lot about getting them tuned in to make them work, uh, uh, work well. First tip is, and this sounds silly, but I got to tell it to you because a lot of people email me and say that they can't get a fix, can't get a fix, not getting a fix. You got to be outside. Okay, you will not get a fix. Like I'm sitting in here inside, I will not get a fix if I'm inside. Right? The reason I might do work inside is to just get the microprocessor talking to the Adafruit, getting empty NEMA sentences back. And so there's some stuff you can do outside, uh, inside to debug, but you will not get a fix inside. Even uh, sometimes, like if I go and I set it by a window and kind of point it outside towards the sky, sometimes I can get a fix from inside if I can look outside and be a uh, see a big enough portion of the sky. But to really reliably get a fix, you need to be outside. <clears throat> Not only outside, you need to get a wide view of the sky. You need to see a good portion of the sky. If you're outside and you've got a building here and you've got a tree here and you've got a post here and you're kind of in this little, this little tunnel, you've got to be able to have the top of your GPS, the antenna on your GPS needs to see a wide swath of the sky. That's the first thing. <clears throat> Second thing that I have found, and some of this stuff might just be superstition, but if you're having trouble with it, just go with the suggestions and see if that will help. The next thing is, is that um, you, know, you can send commands to run this thing at different speeds. And what I have found is, is that I believe that when I try to get five data points a second, when I try to run at that, at that 200 uh, uh, 
uh, millisecond update rate, it's harder for me to get a fix. Might just be my imagination, but I believe that I'm getting fixes quicker and more reliably and more stably when I operate it at one hertz. Okay. If you're not sure how to do that, go in and look at the earlier lessons. We show you how to send commands to it and with those commands get it to operate at one hertz. I believe that you get more stable operation. You get a quick uh, a fix quicker operating at one hertz. Just my opinion. So I operate at one hertz, and that helps me to always get a good fix. Third thing is, if you're troubleshooting, third thing, I have found that in certain configurations that you can get enough power to the Adafruit GPS that the little light will come on and blink and it's powered up, but it will never get a fix. It's, it's got to be good clean power. If you're running it off of 5 volts, it needs to be good, clean 5 volts. And if you have some other stuff in the circuit and you're doing different things and you're getting noise on that 5 volts or if you're having a lot of current and maybe you don't have the full 5 volts or maybe you're not, don't have the current left from whatever you're driving it from, that can be a cause of a problem too. If you're having a problem uh, getting a fix, one of the things that you might try to do is powering it from a separate 5 volt rail, not putting other thing on there and just make sure that you're getting absolutely stable, absolutely clean power. This is a device, it's a very tricky thing if you think of what a GPS is doing is it's looking up trying to find satellites and it's trying to do all this different stuff. That's a pretty tricky, pretty tricky job. You need nice clean power and I have found that if I, if I don't have uh, really good power that can lead to intermittent problems in getting a fix. Okay, finally you will get a, a fix quicker and more reliably if you use the little battery. If you look on the back side, uh, the Ultimate GPS comes with this little clip. Uh, let me get the focus. comes with this little clip. It's a little bit of a chore to, to solder that on, but that little battery clip. If you will put one of these little button batteries in, as such, this is uh, the one that I use, that if you use one of these little button batteries in there, you'll go out and get a fix the first time. After that, it will get a fix quicker and easier in future future times that you go out. So using the little battery does help you get a fix. Okay, finally, there are times that I have found that I have rock solid power, that I have very good view of the sky, clear view of the sky. I'm running at one hertz. I'm using the battery. I'm doing all of the things that I just described to you and I can't get a fix. Okay. And on those days I've actually taken the GPS out of the circuit and got fresh factory fresh GPS and come and put it in and not be able to get a fix. Again this just might be my imagination but I believe that on days with very significant sunspot activity and solar flares when you get that geomagnetic thing going I have found that there's days that I just simply cannot get a fix and I've gone in and I've looked at the you know the the, the NASA satellites and stuff and yeah there's like a, a solar flares or a, a solar storm going on or the the impact of the solar storm hitting the earth and on those days some days I uh, am just not able to get a fix and so if you've tried everything else and you're not getting a fix check on what the solar activity is and it might just be that you need to come back and um, and try again later I will say that I really love the uh, Adafruit GPS it's it's the sort of it's the GPS that I use in all my product projects but I will say uh, it's not uh, it's not real fast at getting a fix. It's not real robust in getting a fix. And so you've got to kind of be real careful with it. But what I found is that if you will go through these things that I've presented in this uh, in this troubleshooting uh, uh, video, you will, you know, uh, 99 times out of 100 be able to get a fix and that one time out of 100 that you're not getting a fix it's probably because of these uh, sunspot and solar flare activities. Okay, hope you guys have found this uh, this tutorial interesting. If you have, think about giving us a thumbs up. Think about subscribing to our channel. Paul McWhorter, toptechboy.com. We will talk to you guys later.